Okay, so moving on. Over here we have our filter section, we have our filter envelope, and our amplifier envelope. Now the filters, uh, the Axis Virus TI2 gives you two uh, multi-mode filters, as you can see right here. So you have analog filter emulation for filter one, and then they both have the low pass, high pass, band pass, and band stop or notch filter feature. Uh, here are selector switches, so we can select only to use filter one, for example, only to use filter two, or we could push both buttons, and now by adjusting the cutoff of filter one, it's going to affect filter two. Now we can offset, say, the cutoff frequency of filter two just by adjusting the cutoff two knob. And it tells you on the screen, uh, filter two offset, uh, either plus value or negative value. Now here's our filter balance. So by turning the filter all the way counterclockwise, we're only utilizing filter cutoff one. Uh, by turning the value all the way clockwise, now we're incorporating only filter two. And by setting it at high noon, we're incorporating filter one and two. Now this can be beneficial because now you can have a four pole mode, a two pole mode, a six pole mode. Um, you can utilize both the filters together to actually give you a steeper pole. Now all this is in much greater detail, obviously in the manual, um, as well as on some videos that Access has provided. Um, but it's a very complex arrangement. It's much easier just to go by ear. So let's go ahead and check out the sound of just uh, cut off filter one with the regular traditional virus low pass filter. It sounds great. Let's listen to both of the filters in low pass mode and let's see what the difference is now. So obviously you can see we got a much steeper, more aggressive slope with a higher boost in the resonance. Now it does, filter one does have a emulation called analog filter. It uses a lot of DSP resources, so kind of use it with caution, but if you hold shift and filter one, it puts it into analog one pole mode. So let's listen to only that. Now if we hold shift filter one, it puts it into analog two pole. Analog uh, three pole. Kind of similar to the MS-20. And now filter four pole. So this is trying to emulate their, basically, the Moog. So if we were to put it only on, uh, say, oscillator one in the sawtooth, let's see how that comes out. I mean, it's pretty close. It definitely has the character of it, but it's still uh, not quite there. But nonetheless, a fantastic filter, uh, you know, emulation. Moving on now, we have our filter envelope. So our filter envelope is going to be controlled by this knob right here, the envelope amount. So by turning it all the way up, And say if I only want to use filter 2 now, I can turn the envelope amount up and only use filter 2. Now if we use them both together, say I'll put filter 2 into band stop with no resonance. Filter 1 I'll keep as a low pass with some resonance. So 
you can really get some nice actual Oberheim kind of sounding fil filtering from uh, their filter modules. And pretty basic are amplifier, envelope, attack, decay, say, release. <laughs> Very nice. So really that's it. I mean, here is the Axis Virus TI2, uh, the complete kind of overview real quick of the top panel. Now you can dive a lot deeper into the menus. Uh, a really good thing I like to do is go to my edit. Um, and I like to kind of go through and just check, make sure that all the parameters are how I want them. Cause you can do uh, the internal clock. Um, you can do velocity mapping, oscillator shape uh, to velocity. So the harder you hit, the different shapes that oscillators can change. I mean, panorama, FM amount, a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Um, but there's also another one called Unison. Now, right now, we're listening to a single voice. And obviously, we're in polyphonic mode. Now, if I turn voices up to twin with a little detune and a full pan spread, right? I can even go up to, say, five voices stacked on top of each other in polyphonic mode. Really huge sound. You may or may not remember I told you I had a kind of secret. Um, about the Axis virus that I really wanted to talk to you guys about. So what I was talking about right now is in the modulation matrix or the edit matrix of the virus TI2, you can see that I have filter envelope uh, to control the filter envelope attack and the filter envelope decay. So basically the filter envelope amount that I set in the filter module is controlling itself. And by doing that, you actually get a nonlinear um, response to the envelope settings such as attack and decay. So that'll give you a much more analog sounding filter. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And you gotta be careful though, by adjusting it just a little bit. So that's more of a linear. And the more negative I go, the more of a nonlinear curve. See now too much, you can kind of start to hear that clicky and that's not the resonance, that's just how fast the filter's snapping once it hits to peak to decay. Now let's listen to what a regular filter sounds like. That's literally the same sound setting with the same filter and not even anywhere close to the same. cool. This virus symbol actually can glow to the speed of the filter envelopes, the amplifier envelopes, the LFO speed, or the internal clock's tempo. So we have our, our hold pedal, our control pedal, um, and just our regular sustain options. We also have USB, which also acts as an audio interface. We have MIDI in, out, and through which is excellent because so many keyboards nowadays are usually just MIDI in or out, um, and that's about it. We also have our digital inputs and outputs, so we have SPDIF. So if your interface supports SPDIF, you can plug it in right there and not have to go through any analog to digital conversion. Now what I have noticed, though, moving on, 
just with the outputs, the quarter inch cables fit very loosely inside their actual connection. As you can see here, this can come out on occasion. I'll pop it in, but look, I mean, it literally just, it wants to pop right out. I mean, these are so light to put in. I mean, right there, it just popped out. So I'm going to have to get that kind of looked at. Um, we also have uh, our secondary, or we have our inputs. So we have analog input left and right. We have a headphone jack. Now we have multiple outputs. So I'm using output one and two right now. And then you have output three, four, output five, six. So quite a bit of features. The inputs are great for using, uh, for example, say like the Electron Analog 4. I could run outputs from that into the virus if I wanted, or I could even use the Moog Sub Fatty output and go right into the Axis virus if I wanted to. However, right now, I do have the Moog going into uh, the Electron Analog 4 because that just has amazing effects. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of the Virus TI2. I wanted to keep it basic, but still give you guys some idea of kind of what lies underneath. Um, it's far more complex than I even talked about or described. Definitely worth checking it out. As far as an overall workhorse, this keyboard is amazing. Um, as far as comparing it to other top-end keyboards, such as Profit 12, uh, you know, Moog Voyagers, other than that, I mean, for me, it's, it's the inspiration. Am I inspired to approach a keyboard and want to play it? It's not digital, it's not analog, it's not any of that crap. Uh, as far as oscillator sound quality goes, as far as filter quality goes, those components make up the character of the sound an instrument can produce to make it somewhat unique, such as, say, the Mini Brute, where you can pick a Mini Brute out of any song or sound in a second. Um, the same goes for, say, the Mini Mode, and even like the Prophet 5s or the Oberheims and the big, you know, vast square, you know, pulse width modulated waves of the 80s. Um, it's really the character and the inspiration that makes a synthesizer great. And I definitely get inspired when I approach the TI-2. And as far as just coming up with like incredible sounds, if I'm lacking inspiration, um, I just go to the virus. I mean, it's there. It's got everything. And it sounds, it sounds incredibly top-notch. The effects, the character section, the filters. I mean, the keys, just the key bed alone is the nicest keys I've ever played in my life. Um, you know, aside from a real acoustic grand piano. So... Let's see what you think. Write your comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? And why? And uh, what else would you guys like to see? Thanks again.